Hello, welcome to another Capra Convo. Got a question for you. How bad do you want it? Now you first hear that, you think, want what? We're talking about life and abundant life here. I wanna ask you a question, or I'm gonna make a statement. Abundant life starts by surrendering yours. Now, what does that mean? What are we talking about, Denise? People want abundant life. You want abundant life, don't you? Yes. But there is a surrender on my end so I can experience abundant life that God's already provided for me. How does this happen? Well, first of all, it's it's coming to the end of yourself, right? Abundant life starts by <laughs> surrendering your own. You know, I, I was looking at that word abundant life or the word life, and it's the word zoe. And zoe is a Greek word that talks about life as God experiences it or life as God renders it. And when you talk about God's kind of life, I want that. I want the Zoe kind of life. But can I live my life and do what I want to do and still experience his life? And I don't think it'll happen that way. <laughs> I think it'll end in a lot of frustration. So there's a place where there's, when are we going to quit doing our own thing? And I think we have to, it's a coming to trusting and knowing we're serving a good God. Jesus is the good shepherd, the great shepherd, and he knows exactly what you need. So coming to know him through a relationship, a friendship, through reading his word, getting to know what he's really like, not maybe what you've heard. Some people have had some bad church experiences, and for that I'm sorry, but there is good church experiences. There is a healthy, there are healthy churches for you to involve yourself with and people where you can grow. They'll challenge you to grow. But I think the first starts here, Denise, says, I've got to surrender. You know, when you put up that flag and you wave that white flag, say, I surrender. I can't do it anymore on my own. And when I go from there, acknowledging I can't be my own happiness, I can't produce that, then I surrender over to God and allow his Holy Spirit to start leading and guiding daily, as you're mentioning. I, I think about the paradox in the fact that we say he leads me beside still waters king david said that in psalm 23 he leads so he's the leader have you thought about that that the one we're following jesus he wants to lead he wants to guide will i let him will we let him lead us and i think it comes through developing trust and even the fact that the lord wants us to be his disciples what does that mean? A disciple is a disciplined learner. So there's something to be said for growing in the knowledge of the word through a discipline. That's a that's almost a four letter word, discipline. <laughs> I mean, it's really how much, how bad wow. do you want it? How bad do you want to grow? He takes us right where we're at. He unconditionally loves us. He's a friend like no other Come that on. sticks closer than a brother. But yet for us to really fulfill our purpose, our destiny, for us to see vision come forward out of our life and fulfill it, we're going to have to trust him and do things his way. He's the king of the kingdom. Denise, you know, we've been through this thing called the pandemic over the last few years. And I tell you, I know most of people are just freaked out. They're afraid. But if you read through the Bible, there are so many stories. <laughs> there are so many Daniel in the lion's den. There's so many the Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego that were at a place where they were ready to give up their own life to trust God. Now, in some people's place, there have been people that have been put in that position. I know we have people that if they don't take a shot, they're going to lose their job. If they don't wear a mask, if they don't do certain things that the government's telling them to do, they're going to lose things. And I watched a video yesterday of a nurse saying, I'm out of here. They're, they're firing me. They're saying I have to do this. And she had it on her little video. She was saying, I've got to trust God. Are we at a place in our lives where we're ready to trust God? I think it's important to make a little uh, notification. You know, when we think about people get these misunderstandings about God and when people say things like, well, God's in control. 
And that affects us in a negative way because uh, it's, we've redefined things. So I want to read you something. Fatalism, disguised as the doctrine of sovereignty, paralyzes the believer. It makes one feel that everything that occurs in his or her life is either done by God or allowed by God. And that is going to mess us up. And then we fall into a trap and it's, it's kind of like a code. Well, I'm not really responsible. God's the one to blame. That's not true. We take, God lets us make choices and your, your growth and your dependency upon him is, is you walking with him, following his um, word and his will as you renew your mind. And it depends on you. There is, you respond to what he has done for you, and that's how you're going to see growth. Well, God's not going to do everything. He told man to take dominion <laughs> over the planet. You know, we're, we're to multiply. We're to do things. So even though God has set all this into play, he's given us his Holy Spirit, I have to submit my heart, my will to him, and then Holy Ghost, I'm learning how to hear his voice, to know how he sounds in my heart, and then take those steps of faith. I don't know what time you're going to be hearing this or whatever. We just voted on our local election. We voted for the school board. We voted for the people that are standing for righteousness and for our kids. That's got to be done by us. God's putting the people into place, but he's moving on to us to take steps of faith and act on that. Yeah. And so let me let me share with you before we close today this uh, parable of the hidden treasure, an extraordinary pearl. Heaven's kingdom realm can be illustrated like this. A person discovered that there was a hidden treasure in a field, and upon finding it, he hid it again. Because of uncovering such treasure, he was overjoyed, and he sold all that he possessed to buy the entire field just so he'd have the treasure. Heaven's kingdom realm is also like a jewel, a merchant in search of rare pearls, and when he discovered one very precious pearl, an exquisite pearl, he immediately gave up all that he had in exchange for it. Now, most people would say God is our pearl. Jesus is the pearl of great price. And, and, and I, I could yes. agree with that. But what if I told you that Jesus says you're his pearl yes. of great price? See, it puts value on us. We start seeing that the value that God had for us that his only son he put forth so he could have us, this pearl, back. Mm -hmm. But most people don't see themselves as pearl, Denise. We see ourselves as just a poor old worm just trying to make it by in this earth. So we're treasure to the Lord. Come on. But he is treasure to us. And I'm saying to you today, as a friend, as a pastor, as one that wants to see you grow, how bad do you want it? How bad do you want to experience all the benefits of the kingdom of God, this pearl of great price to us? We would pray to you today, if you'll agree with me. Father, I just pray for the people listening that we would surrender all. We would give it up so that you and your love for us is the pearl of great price, God, that we could experience the value of how much you value us, that love of how much you value us, God. I pray that for everybody listening to this broadcast in the name of Jesus. Well, God bless you. You go to capperman.com. We hope to talk to you again soon. And I want to just invite you to the service this Sunday at Faith Ministries. Nate Tanner will be sharing this weekend. And Dennis is launching out on a trip to Zambia. Tell what you'll be doing Well, there. we're going to be doing pastors and ministers conferences, graduating Bible schools. Uh, I haven't been to Zambia. I've been to the countries just right around it. I'm going with Nate Tanner, and we're going to see God do some amazing things. Yes, you can find out more about it. And if you want to support that trip, you can uh, see the donate button at capramin.com. And uh, we're a part of this together. And tune in again later in the week and we'll share more updates.